Organizing and sorting data is a central part of computing. Everything we do with computers involves sorting and retrieving data, and doing this as efficiently for your needs is extremely important. So to help with that, this is where file systems come in. Hello everyone, my name's Mike, and here at Sabrin, we love to make and talk tech. So if that's what you're into, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. Over the years, different types of file systems have been developed for different use cases, as well as keeping in line with modern data requirements. In this video, we'll be exploring how file systems work, and what the different types of file systems are being used, focusing on Windows systems. A file system is a method of organizing, sorting, and retrieving data. Operating systems use file systems to handle data, and if it wasn't for file systems, the operating system wouldn't know how to handle and file the data. A file system works by organizing data into files and directories and storing those files and directories on a storage device. When you save a file, the file system stores the data on the storage device in a specific location using a specific layout and organization. The file system also stores metadata about the file, such as file name, size, and creation date, to name a few. When you want to access a file, the file system retrieves the data from the storage device and presents it to you in an easy way for you to understand and use. This process involves reading the metadata and using it to locate the data on the storage device and then retrieving the data and presenting it to you in a readable format. The file system also manages the storage space on the device, keeping track of how much space has been used and how much space is left on said storage device. How the computer achieves all of these tasks depends on the file system being used. So let's take a look at some of the most common file systems and explore how they work. Starting with FAT or File Allocation Table. FAT is a file system supported by Microsoft Windows and is a simple and reliable file system for its time. The first iteration of FAT was designed back in 1977 for floppy disks, but was later repurposed for hard disks as it became popularized. Even though it was developed back in the 70s, FAT is still widely used today for a number of different applications. The FAT file system uses a table called the file allocation table to keep track of which parts of the storage device are being used and which are available. The table is made up of entries, each of which corresponds to a cluster. A cluster is basically a group of sectors on a storage device. When a file is saved, the file system allocates a number of clusters to the file and records the starting cluster number and the length of the file in the file allocation table. One of the key features of the FAT file system is its simplicity is easy to implement and requires very little overhead, which makes it well suited for devices with limited resources. However, this simplicity also means that the FAT file system has some limitations compared to its more modern file systems. For example, it does not support long file names, file permissions, or file compression. It also does not handle large files very well, as the file allocation table can become quite large for devices with large amounts of storage. In fact, you can't store files larger than four gigabytes on FAT. Even so, FAT is still a popular choice due to it being compatible with a wide range of devices, which can be very important for some. Since FAT is a legacy file system, there are different versions of FAT available. FAT32 is an old legacy system that was first introduced with Windows 95, but it is still widely used by modern systems today. This is because, like I mentioned before, it is easily compatible with a lot of devices. You can't go wrong with FAT32 for most instances, as it supports almost any device. But the four gigabyte max file size limit does hold it back. There's even a max partition limit of two terabytes with FAT32 file systems. So if you've got a storage device larger than two terabytes, well, you're gonna run into some issues. Another popular version of FAT is XFAT. XFAT stands for Extended File Allocation Table. This is the next generation of the FAT file system. With XFAT, Microsoft aimed to cover all of the shortcomings of FAT32 while at the same time capitalizing on the popularity of FAT. XFAT supports much larger file sizes and has a larger volume limit as well. 
XFAT has a 128 terabyte volume limit, which is a huge leap from the two terabyte limit of FAT32. While XFAT itself doesn't have any file size limitations, you have to keep in mind that there is still some limitations imposed by older devices and operating systems while using XFAT. This means that even though you are using XFAT, Older versions of Windows, for example, might still not be able to read files larger than four gigabytes. New Technology File System, or NTFS, is another hugely popular file system being used in computers these days. NTFS is also a Windows-based file storing system. It was introduced with Windows NT in 1993 and is now the default file system for most versions of modern Windows. One of the key features of NTFS is its use of metadata to store information about each file, such as its creation date, last access date, and permissions. This allows for more efficient management of the files and better security. NTFS also supports disk quotas, which allows administrators to limit the amount of disk space that a user or group can use. NTFS is a more advanced file system than FAT. It offers several improvements over FAT, including support for longer file names, file compression, and larger files. NTFS is more efficient and reliable than the older brother of FAT, and this is why most modern computers prefer to use NTFS over FAT. Even though it is better than FAT, it is not universally supported as FAT, so NTFS is most strictly reserved for Windows-based systems. While the choice of file system available to you heavily depends upon your operating system and your needs, there is some wiggle room, and knowing what file system works for what you need can save a lot of headaches in the long run. If you want your files to work with most systems and every single one of your files is mostly under four gigabytes, then you can use the older FAT32 file system. If you wanna get around this limitation and still maintain your compatibility with a lot of different devices, then you can use extended FAT or XFAT. You may be limited to FAT32 depending on your operating system, so just be aware that you may not have that option. Let's say you only want to share files within the Windows ecosystem, then using NTFS is a great and efficient way to store files. NTFS is the most modern and secure file system available for Windows users, so it's definitely recommended to stick with that file system. The important thing to remember is to make sure that the file system you use on your storage device, such as a flash drive, needs to be compatible with the OS of your host PC to save yourself from any new nuisance. You want to make sure that if you are using, let's say, a Mac and a Windows PC, then stick with an XFAT type file system. Otherwise, if you try to use an NTFS file system on your Mac computer, it's not going to be natively supported and you may have to purchase a software that will enable you to read NTFS file system on your Mac computer. So the next time you are opening a file or saving your documents, you can take a second to appreciate the thought and engineering that went behind making it possible. It doesn't matter what file system you choose or go for at the end of the day. At the basic level, all of these file systems are doing one simple task, and that is making sure your data is safely stored and catalogued. But that's it for today's video. If you've enjoyed it, then make sure to smash that like button and also hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.